Hey everyone, in this video, I'll be showing you guys how you can recreate this animation absolutely from scratch on Adobe After Effects. In this quick tutorial, you will be able to learn what After Effects composition settings you need to have for these animations, how I get the assets to create these animations, the complete step-by-step -step process, and as well as the complete project file for you guys to access for free in the description of the video. So let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing which we need to do is to create a composition on Adobe After Effects. And in the composition, we need to set the FPS to 60 frames per second and as well as we'll be keeping the height and width to 1920 by 1080p. The reason why we're keeping the FPS to 60 is because we want to have a clean look onto our video and to have the smoothy look in our animations. So that's why it's necessary to keep the frame rate to 60 FPS. Now once that is done, the first thing which you need to do is to take a screenshot of the Google web page. And once we've done that, we'll be adding it into our composition. After that, we'll be creating a new solid and matching its color exactly to the Google web page background. I'll be just adjusting the screenshot right in the middle so that its visibility is actually much better which you guys can see on the screen right now. So now as we want to animate the whole parts differently, what we need to do is to create masks here. So you can see right now here I'll be creating a mask for the Google logo using the rectangle tool. So now you can see that the screenshot is actually masked and you can only see the Google logo right now. Now I press the Ctrl D button to duplicate the same layer and now I'll be removing its mask so that I can create a new mask on a different part. And I'll be renaming this layer to tabs so it is easier for us to manage the layers. And now by selecting the layer and then pressing the rectangle tool, I'll be creating a mask. A mask in which I'll be just only adding the tabs in it. So now I'm actually looking to add the search bar in dark mode. For that, I've got another screenshot of the Google web page, but this time it's in dark mode. After that, from the screenshot because I only want the search bar to be visible, what I'll be doing is actually creating a shape layer using the rounded rectangle tool and then create a shape layer which is adjacent to the part of the screenshot which we need. To increase the roundness of the edges of our rounded rectangle, we'll be going into the contents of the shape layer and then going into rectangle and then in the rectangle path we'll be increasing the roundness and we'll be keeping the fill on and the stroke off. After that, what we'll be doing is actually track matting the dark screenshot layer with the shape layer which we recently made. So you can see right now the search bar is exactly what we want. And then I'll be pre-composing these both layers and then renaming it to search bar. And then just make some adjustments so it's visible clearly. So right now we want to add a text into our composition. For that we'll be using the text tool to add the text into our layer. And we want to write right now how to make money online. So we'll be doing exactly that. So right now we'll be using a font called SF Pro and we'll be keeping the font color to white. After that, we need to add a blinking typewriter effect into our text layer. So for that, what we'll be doing is actually going into the effects and panel and then using an effect called the blinking cursor typewriter console. Once we have added the effect into our text layer, you guys can see right now the typewriter effect is actually added as well as the blinking effect as well. But you guys can see right now the text is actually being shown right from the middle and that is exactly what we do not want. So to fix that, what we'll be doing is actually go into the paragraph tab and then left align our text. So now you can see our text is actually being typed from the left side. Right now we'll be using some animation presets from a free plugin called Animation Compository by Mr. Horse. The link of it will be available in the description for you guys to actually download as well. And I'll be using this preset into our Google logo so that we can enhance the animation. But first to use the preset we need to actually create the layer 3D. So we'll be doing that. So you guys can see right now the preset is actually working into our Google logo. We'll be just adjusting the anchor point of the layer so it's right in the middle of the Google logo. So that our movement is actually a lot more better and as well as smoother. Similarly for the tabs layer as well, we'll be using another preset which you guys can see right now. And we'll be making also this layer to 3D as well. And as well as we have also set the anchor point of the tabs layer as well to keep it right in the middle. And similarly, we'll be adding the fade-in effect into our tabs layer as well. And then adjusting the pacing of the keyframes exactly to how we want it. First, we'll be adjusting the anchor point of the search bar right into the middle. Now, after making most of the layers into 3D, you guys can see that the Google layer is actually overlapping over search bar. So to fix that, what we'll be doing is actually increase the Z-axis position of the search bar. So to do that, what we'll be doing is actually pressing the button P to show the position and then increase the minus value of the third parameter so that the z-axis is actually increased and the overlapping is actually finished because the search bar is actually over the google logo 
So first we'll be manually creating a scale in animation into our search bar. So to do that first we'll be doing is actually pressing the S button to show the scale parameters. And then press the unlink button so that we can disable the uniform scale. And then at the start of keyframe we'll be actually decreasing the scale value and then later on we'll be increasing it to create that scale in animation which you guys can see on the screen right now. And then select both the keyframes and then press the F9 button to make it a lot more smoother. And then to make it even better, go to the graph editor and actually faster the keyframes to achieve a smooth chunky look. Even though there are still some overlapping errors, but we'll be fixing that as well. We'll be fixing the overlapping issue by decreasing the z-axis of Google by actually making it to go into positive numbers. By increasing the third parameter to positive numbers. So you guys can see right now on the screen, the animation looks absolutely smooth. So next what you need is a cursor PNG. So to do that what I'll be doing is actually going to Canva and getting that PNG. So right now I'll be creating this small mask so that only one of the cursor is left on the screen. We'll be using the cursor to actually create the clicking animation. So we'll be adjusting this cursor near the search icon and then as well as adjust its anchor point to make it right in the middle. So first we'll be creating a scale animation so that we can create that clicking animation which you guys can see right now. And we'll be also pressing F9 to make it a lot more smoother and go to the graph editor to make it even more faster which you guys can see on the screen right now so it looks like it is actually clicking now we'll be creating a position keyframe and actually bring our cursor right from the bottom we'll be using pen tool to make the path of the animation in curved form what we need to do is actually press the alt button and then drag the point a lot further so that the curve is actually created so you guys can see right now we have actually a curve in our path of the animation and then we'll be adding motion blur to all our layers where so it's actually more smoother and also making all the layers into 3D. Right now we'll be creating a new camera layer and as well as a null layer so that we can animate the whole 3D space using the camera. We'll be parenting the camera with the null layer and then activating its motion blur as well as 3D and then create a position keyframe so that we can create a zoom out effect onto our whole 3D space. And also make some other adjustments so that the animation looks completely smooth. You guys can see right now the animation looks really smooth and amazing. So right now we want to create a transition between the layers. So what I'll be doing is actually creating a scale up animation from the search bar. So to do that what I'll be doing is actually copying the shape layer from the search bar which we previously made. Adjust its position so it's perfectly set and right onto our search bar. And also make it 3D and also set its anchor point as well. And keep the fill of the layer exactly the same color as the search bar. In the 3D scene the shape layer should be below the text layer as well as the cursor. And then we'll be creating scale keyframes to create a scale animation which you guys can see on the screen right now. And then smoothen the keyframes using the F9 button and then using the graph editor to make it even more faster. And also make a fade in animation onto our cursor so that we can achieve a smooth transition. And also I'll be using another preset from Mr. Horse so I can add a fade out effect onto the text layer. So, so you guys can see right now our transition is successfully made. So right now I'll be looking to separate the first scene with the second scene. So first what we actually need to do is actually cut the shape layer into two different parts. By selecting the shape layer one and then pressing Ctrl Shift D to cut the layer which you guys can see on the screen. And then I'll be selecting all the rest of the components and actually pre-composing them. And then renaming the pre-composed layer to main. So right now you guys can see right now how our animation is looking like and as well as we have successfully made our transition as well. So right now I'll be using a laptop 3D model into our composition. You can use Sketchfab to download these models and use it into our After Effects compositions. And first I'll be looking to adjust the anchor point of the 3D model right into the middle so that we can actually easily move our 3D model as well as rotate it. You guys can see on the screen right now we can easily and perfectly rotate our 3D model. So that is why it is necessary to set the anchor point first. Right now we'll be creating the screen of the laptop. So first what we need to do is actually use the rectangle tool to create a shape layer. Nearly adjacent to the screen of the laptop. And keep the stroke off and fill on. And actually set the color to white. Now what we'll be doing is actually setting the layer to 3D. And actually parent linking it to the laptop. After that we'll be pre-composing the screen layer so that we can later on customize the layer. Which you guys will be seeing later on. And then we'll be again making the layer 3D. And then and also again paneling it to the laptop. Now what we need to do is actually set the screen onto the laptop. So we'll be adjusting the position of the screen perfectly so it is perfectly set on the laptop. This is very necessary because we want the screen to actually move perfectly with the laptop as well. That is why it is necessary to set it right onto the laptop screen. And then we can just adjust the size of the layer so that we can fill in the gaps. You guys can see right now our screen is actually perfectly adjacent to the laptop. Now what we need to do is actually we'll be adding this PNG into the screen. So what we'll be doing is actually opening the pre-composed layer which we previously made and then add the picture inside the pre-composed layer. Now as the picture's color is actually white, what we need to do is actually make it into black. So I'll be using the invert effect in the effects and panel to change this color from white to black and then adjust its size as well. So you guys can see right now our laptop looks absolutely amazing. 
Right now we'll be just adjusting the position as well as the scale of the laptop. Oh, so next what we'll be doing is actually creating a text animation which you guys can see on the screen right now. So the first thing what we'll be doing is actually use the rounded rectangle tool to create a shape layer. After that, I'll be making the fill of the shape layer from solid color to gradient color so that we can achieve that gradient look into our shape layer. Now next, I'll be making the stroke of the layer also into gradient form. The color of the gradient is actually set to white and black. Now by dragging these dots, you can actually adjust the position of the gradient. So you can adjust the overall color of the whole shape layer. So you can customize the color where you want to be shown in the whole shape layer. By dragging the dots which have the dashed lines, you can actually change the gradient of the stroke. And by dragging the dots with a simple line, you can actually change the gradient of the solid fill layer. And also we'll be decreasing the stroke so it looks more aesthetic. Now I'll be using the ellipse tool to create a round shape layer. Now I'll be setting the color of the gradient into more whitish form. Next, I'll be adding a dollar sign into our shape layer which we recently made. And I'll be using the font SF Pro and set it to bold to add the text layer in the rounded shape. And then I'll be pre-composing both these layers so it is grouped into one single form. After that is done, I'll be creating another text layer and write the word coding in it and also set its color to white. And then adjust its position and as a font size so it looks perfectly set. Now I'll be looking to add a gradient ramp effect onto the text layer and then I'll be adjusting the position of the colors so it looks exactly like how we want it to be. And now I'll be looking to animate the rounded shape which we recently made which has the dollar sign as well in it. I'll be adding position keyframes into it. And also what I'll be doing is actually track matting it to the shape layer which is behind it which is shape layer 3. So you guys can see right now after track matting the shape layer it is actually hidden. You can unhide it using this eye button and also I'll be adding position keyframes onto a text layer as well which you guys can see right now. Now we'll be also animating the gradient shape layer and we'll be adding a scale in animation into it like we previously made for other text layers and also we'll be adding a fade in animation into the rounded dollar sign so it looks a lot more smoother during the transition next we'll be selecting all the keyframes and then pressing f9 to make them smoother and also by using the graph editor we'll be actually making them a lot more faster as well similarly selecting the keyframes of the position and then pressing f9 and also making them smoother as well and then we'll be making some adjustments in the keyframes so our animation is perfectly set and smooth and then we can select all these layers together and then we can adjust its position all together at the same time and make it 3D as well so that we can add a 3D look using rotation by pressing the R button on the layer. Right now we'll be looking to create some animations on the laptop. So we'll be adding some rotation as well as position keyframes onto it and also animate its scale as well. And then we'll be selecting all these keyframes, pressing the F9 button to make it a lot more smoother. So you guys can see right now, our animation looks smooth right now. Now again, we'll be changing the position of the laptop. So again, we'll be creating position keyframes on the laptop so that it is adjusted on the left side. As well as we'll be doing it to the coding text layer as well. Let's select both the keyframes and press the F9 button to make the overall look a lot more smoother. And using the graph editor, you can make the animation even more faster. Now next, we'll be adding another 3D model into the composition, which is this 3D Shopify logo. And also I've got this logo for free from Sketchfab itself. So you guys can do it too as well. First, we'll be looking to adjust the position as well as the rotation of the Shopify logo. Next, we'll be looking to add rotation as well as position keyframes onto the layer. You guys can see right now on the screen how it looks like. Now next, what we'll be doing is actually create a duplicate of the coding text layer animation. So to do that, first what we'll be doing is actually create a duplicate in the project itself. We cannot do it in the composition because it will not be a different pre-composed layer. And if we do not do it this way, it will start customizing both the layers at the same time. So that is why we have to duplicate it this way and add it into our composition again. We'll be making it 3D and adjusting its position as well. And then later on change the elements of it inside the pre-composed layer. Now we'll be changing the text layer in the second layer from coding to drop shipping. Now what we'll be doing is actually create a camera layer and then a null object as well and parent linking the camera to the null layer. Now once the movement is all set, next we'll be creating some shape layers to add more depth to the animation. Now after creating the first triangle, we'll be actually making it to 3D. Now as you guys can see, you cannot see the layer right now on the composition. So what you need to do is actually go to the position and decrease the z-axis so it is visible in the composition. And then we'll be adding a trim path animation onto our shape layer. 
we'll be selecting both the keyframes and then pressing F9 button to make it even more smoother and using the graph editor it will actually make it even more faster and you guys can see on the screen right now how the movement actually looks like we can adjust the keyframes where the overall composition looks really smooth and then what I'll be doing is actually press the Ctrl D button to actually duplicate another shape layer and this time what I'll be doing is actually rotating it to the other opposite side and then I'll be changing its color to green and we'll be selecting its keyframe and actually showing it a little later than the red shape layer and then we'll be setting the anchor point of both the triangles so that we can create that smooth rotation keyframes and this is how our second scene actually looks like and now using the camera layer which we previously made and animating it using the null object what we'll be doing is actually create a zoom out effect onto the whole composition. Now using the camera layer, what we'll be doing is actually create a transition between the second scene as well as the third scene. So to do that first what we did is actually create position keyframes as well as Z axis rotation keyframes which you guys can see on the screen right now. And now I'll be creating a new solid so that we can create that background for the third scene. And as well as I'll be making it 3D and then adjusting its position. And then adjusting its position right into the front of the screen. And then I'll be using an effect called circle effect. And adjust its size as well as its feather. And then I'll be animating the radius of the solid so that we can create that circle overall animation. We'll be adjusting the keyframes so it shows actually a lot more faster. And now using the text tool I'll be creating a text layer. And adding a text your work ethic matters more and then converting its color from white to black. After that we'll be making it to 3D and then adjust its position as well as rotation so it shows onto the screen. So next, on the text, we'll be adding a fade up words transition using the effects and control panel. And then we'll be creating a new shape layer to create a line transition and set its points from one point to another and change its color from green to black. And then increase the stroke of it so it is visible on the screen perfectly. And then set it to 3D and then adjust its position as well as rotation. And then we'll be creating a trim path animation onto our shape layer which we recently made. Put a keyframe on 100% of the end point and then, and then at 0%. And then select both the keyframes and press F9 and using the graph editor you can even make it a lot more faster. And then we'll be adding the final text layer onto our composition. So to do that what we'll be doing is actually duplicating the recent text layer. And then change its color from black to white. And then also changing the text to then anything else. And then adjust its transition keyframes so it shows perfectly on the screen. And for the final touch, what we'll be doing is creating an adjustment layer and then add an effect called CC Vignette. And also we'll be adding a Gaussian Blur effect onto the same adjustment layer. And once that is done, we'll be creating a mask using the ellipse tool which you guys can see on the screen. And there you have it, our animation will be completely done. So there you have it, your animation is all completed and I hope that you have learned a lot from this video. And if you have learned something new and valuable from this video, comment the word valuable and right now you can check out this recent video which I have made and hopefully see you soon.